What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We sort of teased it in our last video, but yeah, in today's video, we are gonna be taking on these rear shocks and doing the outboard shock relocation, which if you don't know what that is, essentially you're taking the upper mount of the rear shocks that is mounted inside the frame and you're moving it to the outside of the frame where you weld a bracket onto the outside of the frame. It's supposed to give you a little better stability, help with body roll, and you know, it just helps with the, the handling of it generally on road and off road. So let's get started. So the rear shocks mount basically directly on the opposite side of this cleaned off section of frame, kind of in like a, a dished out part of the frame. And it's kind of like sunken down in there where the, where the shock mount is. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to access. I'll walk you through kind of how you have to remove the upper shock mount because it is definitely annoying. All right, so got the shocks out and I will explain what is so difficult about removing these shocks. So you've got your 17 millimeter nut. It's a nylon lock nut. If you just take a wrench and spin it, the whole shock shaft spins. So you end up getting nowhere and not actually spinning the nut off. So what you need to do, shock shaft has a Allen on the top. First you get your, your flex head ratchet on there because that's the only thing that you can actually reach it with because it needs to be kind of like that to actually access it. And then you get your Allen in there and you spin this guy off all with one hand because you can't reach two hands up there. And in my case, there's rust on the thread. So it just took so much force to actually spin the nut off that it actually ended up just rounding the Allen out. So yeah, that is what is so annoying about this. There's a couple other ways to do it if, if you know the Allen isn't working. Some people get pry bars and pry up against the shock and the frame to keep the shock from spinning. Other people lift the boot up and get vice grips on the shock shaft to keep it from spinning. That is something I've had to do. But yeah, it's not super fun. All right, now that we got those dumb shocks dealt with, we are going to get some cardboard out and start mocking up uh, what we're gonna do for the shock relocation. Ordinarily, I probably would have made this part all out of one piece, but I didn't have quite enough of that size of steel. So this and these pieces are made out of eighth inch, while this main plate where the strut is gonna mount to is 3 sixteenths. Otherwise, I would have just done this out of one piece and just folded these down, but this is the way we're gonna do it. Got my new welding helmet. It's a Yes Welder welding helmet and they're so cheap on Amazon. I'm gonna test it out for the first time. So hopefully this helps with uh, my crappy welding. And I'll link this guy in the description. Got my first side made up. Honestly, I'm not mad about how the welds turned out. I'm not 
a good welder by any means. It's a Hobart Handler 125 flux core welder. And honestly, I think these welds are just fine. These ones, I grinded them down because they kind of suck. The rest of them, they passed my uh, visual test. This stuff is super expensive, but it is worth every penny. I've heard not so great things about weld through primers, but this one apparently is the absolute best as far as making it seem like you're just welding on bare steel. When you're sandwiching two pieces of metal together, it's good to have both sides coated so that you don't have any rust problems down the road between the two. So I've got both sides coated with weld through primer. We're gonna at least get this tacked in place and do a test fit with the shock before I start getting too far ahead of myself on the other side. I got about, I don't know, a little over a half an inch of space between the boot of the shock and the inside of my tire. But these FJ rims are, uh, I think they're a positive 15 offset, which means they kind of sit in a little bit. So I think the future plan would be to get rims with like a zero offset or maybe even a negative offset to get that out a little bit but maybe temporarily I could run some spacers because I do have a set of spacers I could use. I don't like spacers, but that might be the route I go for now. Otherwise the shock, I think fits really great. I have to get it fully welded up and uh, get the other side done. Well, it could be better, but it could also be worse. I'll chalk it up to the flux core welder. I take zero of the blame. I'm gonna let this cool down, then we'll hit it with some primer and paint. Get this side on, all painted up, ready to go. All right, got this side finished up. I'm gonna let this cool down, probably call it a night and finish up the job tomorrow.
valve is finished. The shock boot is a little bit close to the tire. I can still fit my hand in between, but um, it's like, it's got plenty of space between the tire and the actual shaft. I still think I'll probably end up running spacers until I get a new set of wheels with a better offset. Honestly, not too bad of a job. The hardest part of that was just getting the rear shocks out of the original location. I think it's a great mod as far as, you know, like the cost goes because it's really just a few dollars worth of steel. And uh, if you have a welder and you have the tiniest amount of fabrication skills like me, it's a relatively easy modification. It takes a little bit, but yeah. Anyways, want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys next time.